this video, I'm going to show you how to use a displacement map and blend if to blend text and logos into various surfaces such as fabric and like brick walls. So the first thing you need is an image that has some sort of blank surface that has like fabric or a texture or something that you're going to put your text or logo onto. I'm just going to use this face mask image as my example. The next step is then to make a displacement map. So to do that, all we're going to do is go control J to duplicate our layer. Then we're going to go up to image adjustments and select desaturate to make it black and white. From there, we got to go up to filter blur and select Gaussian blur. And we're just going to put a little tiny bit of blur, like two or three is fine and click OK. And then we're just going to add a little bit of contrast. So we're going to go back up to image adjustments and select curves or levels and just make your image more contrasty than it was something like that and click OK. And then we're just going to save this as our displacement map to use later. So to do that, just go up to file and we're going to go save as and I'm going to call this one don't panic map and just make sure you know where you save it. I'm just going to save it in this folder and keep it as a PSD Photoshop file and click save and then click OK for maximum compatibility. Now we're ready to add our text. So let's just click the eyeball here to make our black and white layer not visible anymore. And then go over to the T over here, your type tool, click on the screen and type the word that you want. So I'm going to type displace and I'm going to use the move tool to move it over a bit. You can see mine is obviously too big. So I'm going to double click back on my uh, text layer over here. And then up here, you can just choose your font, the size of your font, um, and then color. Those are the only things you really need up here. And then you can also use character over here to change the separation of your letters. So if I go minus 100, you can see it crunches them together. Uh, plus 100 would separate them more apart like that. And you can change the width. So I can go here to like 50% and that'll mash them in like that. So play around in character and these until you get the text to align uh, and be the size that you want. Once you have your text, the size and color and font and placement that you want, we're going to convert it to a smart object. So select your text layer, right click on it and go up to convert to smart object. Now we're going to apply the displacement map to that text layer. So it'll kind of fold and match with these, like all these folds in the mask. It'll kind of look like it's folding with it. To do that, go up to filter, go down to distort and select displace. Uh, numbers here of horizontal and vertical scale of five are probably good. We can change those later if we want because it's a smart object. Click OK. Then you're going to find that displacement map that we created earlier. So mine was called don't panic map and I'm going to double click on that and you can see that it kind of warps it a little bit. It kind of displaces things to match those kind of folds that are on the mask. Then we're going to go over to our blend mode here and we're going to pick one so that the text kind of blends in with the mask a little bit more. So I think two that work really good are linear burn or color burn. Uh, I'm going to select linear burn for this one. But you can see that color burn already allows some of the like highlights to kind of come through and emphasizes some of the shadows already. But I'm going to select linear burn so we can do that manually a little bit more ourselves. Once you've selected your blend mode, then just double click to the right of your text layer over here, which will bring up the layer style window. And within here, all we're going to do is mess with the underlying layer to start. So you can see here, if I move this one to the right, as I move it further and further and further, you can see that the, the darks are actually disappearing. If I move this one to the left, you can see that the lights are disappearing. But both of those are disappearing pretty harsh. So what we have to do is hold Alt and then click on it and slide and it'll separate the two pieces here, which will make the transition a little more smooth. So I don't think we really have to worry too much about the darks over here, about the shadows, because the further I go, it kind of looks bad there. So I'm just going to leave it kind of over here. Yours might have a situation where the, the shadows pop a little bit more through, but mine's going to be on the highlights. So I'm going to hold alt again and then click on here and separate these ones. And you can see that that allows me to choose how much of that 
the highlights kind of shine through from the mask, from the original highlights that are on the mask here. I'm kind of just looking at this area here, you know, this area here to see how it looks on the white part still here. And I'm gonna kind of finesse that till I get the look that I kind of want. So it's maybe somewhere around there, I think looks pretty good. It looks consistent with the white and click OK. And at this point, you're pretty much done, except I usually also add one more adjustment layer at the top. So I'm gonna click on this one here and I'm gonna add a hue saturation. And this just allows me to do a couple things. One, it allows me to kind of bring back the saturation a little bit if I don't, if I think it's too harsh. And if you can see, I'm changing everything, right? So it's important that once you add the hue saturation, that you also click this right here. And that's gonna create a clipping mask, meaning that the hue saturation layer is only affecting the text and not anything else from your images below. Now when I slide saturation, it's only affecting the text. So I think I want something a little bit less saturated, maybe around there. And this also allows me to change the hue up here or color to just slide it along to pick something different, like maybe make it more pink or something like that. But I actually like the red, so I'm gonna go back. Now I'm just gonna show you a few other quick ones that I made using the exact same steps. So this one here is just on a wall and it's a text one again. And if I click the eyeball, that's what it was before. And that's what I added on after, the exact same steps, except I don't have a hue saturation layer on this one because I liked how it looked already. This one is on a shirt. So if I click it, that's what it was before, just a blank shirt and kind of like a quick little mock-up uh, logo on a shirt. You could do it this way. However, for this one, you can see that the edges are probably just a little bit too sharp. Like when you print something on a shirt, it's not that sharp. So something that you might want to do with one like this that's, that's straight on is go up to filter, and maybe go down to blur and Gaussian blur and just blur it out a little bit, like two or three so that the edges aren't so perfect. So maybe like 2.5 and that makes it look a little bit better. For this next one, I put the same logo on a toilet paper roll, but you can see that in this case, it wasn't just a flat image. So if you have something where you have to actually angle your logo or text, this is how you do it. So you click on your uh, logo or text layer and then head up to edit go down to transform and skew or distort is distorts probably the easiest one and you just move the corners here to angle it to match with the angle of your object so in this case probably something like that and then just click check so now it's kind of angled with it. And while that looks okay, there is still something that's off with this one because I also had to do something else, which is this part of the toilet paper roll was kind of blurry. So if I, when I originally put the logo on, it seemed like this edge here was way too sharp. So I applied a lens blur on this to make sure that this part was more blurry and this is the part that was in focus, that was sharper. I'll show you how to do it on this towel one because I think it's more obvious. So I'm gonna go control plus here to zoom in for you. So you can see in this image that this part of the actual image is actually blurry, right? This is out of focus. And this kind of lane over here is where it's sharp. So I like the way this looks over here, but this doesn't make any sense because the towel is blurry and the logo is sharp. So to create that lens blur effect, all you have to do is add a layer mask. So I'm gonna delete this layer mask here. So you just click on this one right here, add a mask and then go to your gradient and make sure it's, so you can click on here, make sure that this is black and white so that you can find that right here in basics. This uh, first one right here, the, the, sorry, the third one is just going from black to white, click okay. And just make sure you're dragging the black from where you want it to be blurry. So I want this to be blurry over here. So I'm gonna drag this, it was gonna be black on an angle towards the white over there. And you'll get this, it'll kind of fade it out right now. And that's that's fine. Then you're gonna click on your logo or text layer, go up to filter and go down to blur and lens blur. In here, you're gonna see the logo or text or whatever you have. And you can see what I did here was my radius, if you go too much, then it's there's an extreme difference. And my image was not out of focus this much. Yours could be though, it could be really blurry to focused over on this side. Mine wasn't so much, it was you know, somewhere around like this, it was slightly blurry to being in focus. So you're just kind of playing around with that until you get the look that you think matches your image and uh, the rest and make sure your source is layer mask, 
The rest doesn't really matter for this. Click OK. And then you can see nothing still really happened because what we have to do now is click on our mask, right click on it, and go disable layer mask. Now you can see that there's a little bit of blur that was applied to this logo and it looks much better, especially if we kind of zoom out. That looks a lot more natural and it fits on the towel a lot better. And then you can also apply the exact same Gaussian blur that we did the last time just to make sure that all the edges kind of blur out a little bit as well. So that's it. That's how you use Displacement Map and Blend If to blend text and logos onto various surfaces. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.